The evidence is growing that Russian troops are helping separatists fight Ukraine's army. The official word from the Kremlin, denial. But what's the mood in other parts of Moscow? Do the people there feel Putin is waging a secret war in eastern Ukraine? That's what we sent our Nala Ayed out to find. Russia at peace goes to elaborate lengths to remember Russia at war. Most of all, to honor the sacrifice, to relive victory. On this year's Victory Day, back in May, the Russian president also celebrated his own conquest of Crimea and his subsequently soaring popularity at home. Sacrifice was minimal. But war has been raging since, right on Russia's doorstep. A conflict Russia blames on Ukrainians, while much of the West blames on Russia. The question of Russia's involvement in Ukraine has been raised repeatedly abroad, and many Western leaders believe Russia is deeply involved. And now the question is being asked here, is Russia again at war? <laughs> Valentina Melnikova's phone rings constantly. <laughs> She runs the activist group Committee for Soldiers' Mothers. They call from as far as Siberia to say their sons were sent on drills, then disappeared. Despite Moscow's repeated denials, she is convinced thousands of Russian soldiers are in Ukraine under orders to fight with the rebels. Today we received the first credible info from Ukraine, she says. A soldier called his mother and said, we are in Donetsk, we are under fire. Russia denies it. But the West accuses Putin of calculated moves to shore up the rebels, well-timed tactics to keep the battle in play. A strategy that's boosted both Russian nationalism and mistrust of the West to unprecedented levels. Turn off your TVs. This is RT and we're a propaganda bullhorn. Propaganda bullhorn? Anissa Nawe clearly relishes a good war of words. To bring people stories. He's a senior political correspondent at Russia Today, an international network that beams Russia's perspective abroad. An American who came here to study, she fell in love and stayed. She's deeply skeptical of how Russia is portrayed abroad. So is there a war going on? Is Russia at war right now? I think it depends how you define war. Um, again, that's very subjective. There's different levels of war. Is there an information war going on? For sure. The consistent view from the Kremlin at home and abroad is that the Ukrainian government is fascist and illegitimate, supported by the U.S. and the West. A narrative endlessly repeated on local state television and on the streets. I think the Ukrainians are to blame because they've let these fascists rise to power, she says. When there's a war, popularity zips up. Ben Judah traveled extensively in Russia and wrote a critical book about Putin. This was never a dominant mainstream feeling until Putin changed the propaganda lines on Russian television in order to explain why his ally had been toppled in Kiev. People here care what happens in Ukraine. The family and neighborly ties now tug at Russian hearts and wallets. The money is for medicine and food, the backpacks for the children of the fighters, says this volunteer. Ukraine's rebels considered heroes by many here, and it's easier to find websites inviting volunteers to join their fight in solidarity. A lot of support, too, for Putin's open backing of that fight creating a hero image that magnifies and multiplies that people will pay money to own. Yet according to the latest polling here, only a quarter of Russians believe their country is at war in Ukraine. I don't think so, she says, but we're compassionate. We provide humanitarian aid. 
идет. Ну, не знаю, у меня такое мнение. То есть, как бы... There's a feeling somebody is trying to lure Russia into it, he says. But so far, they haven't crossed this line. There is growing evidence available to Russians suggesting the contrary. Russian soldiers captured and paraded in Ukraine. Russian mothers and wives speaking out. There are also rumors of soldiers killed in Ukraine and buried in secret graves. A group of Russian journalists tried to investigate reports a hundred paratroopers from one town have been killed in action. They found at least one grave before thugs scared them off. The driver is very brave. Vladimir Romansky was the videographer behind the camera. Were you scared? Yeah, we were really scared. Some people don't want this information goes to the world. They don't want uh, that people know. That's why his employer, privately owned Rain Television, has made it a mission to make it known, confirming and compiling a list of unexplained casualties, deaths and injuries, and posting it online. In 99% of the cases, uh, the, what the say to the relatives they were sent to the maneuvers to Rostov region and they were killed on the border with Ukraine. I mean like on the border, like seriously. The headlines are followed with images of a cemetery with wreaths and plaques containing the names of alleged Russian soldiers who were killed in Ukraine. Did your organization try to check this information? Russia today also covered the story. In this interview, though, a different advocate for soldiers' mothers closely towed the official line. He went there of his own accord. He did not follow any orders. What story could we move to tomorrow? Now he said it's not in Russia's interest to invade or send troops to Ukraine. I would say Russia is trying to protect its interest in its region. But I think that the interests of other countries are being completely whitewashed by the mainstream media. Melnikova is sure there's been a whitewash, but by the Russian authorities and its media. The idea of a soldier's anonymous death infuriates her. Through eight Russia conflicts, she says she's never seen anything like this. I loathe Russian leaders and loathe the military, she says. This is the most secret war ever. What looks like a war, sounds like a war, walks like a war, it is a war. As Western messages turn more combative this week, Putin's latest move is to try to emerge as peacemaker, announcing a seven-point plan to end the fighting, seemingly very far from fomenting war or fighting one. Nalayed, CBC News, Moscow. Well, there's still lots more to come in tonight's program including how these college students found the perfect roomie. And with school resuming in most of the country, our Nick Purden does some important research. If I, say back, if I say back to school, what comes to mind? Bye bye kids. More answers to that question coming up on The National.